Yo, 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 what up, y'all? So look, man, today we're going to talk about coronavirus. We're just going to talk about coronavirus because everybody else talking about coronavirus. So you know I like being an open book with y'all. Let me share with y'all some of the things and adjustments that I've had to make since coronavirus has happened or since it's, um, it's entered into the United States of America. Um, one of the, the biggest things, and I, let me preface my comments by saying this. I teach my team to begin with the four C's. The four C's, I implement this not only in Candy Shack, but in my Jamba Juices I own. And that's customer service, cleanliness, consistency, and communication. Communication amongst each other, amongst my employees, amongst my team. Cleanliness is in my four C's. That's the pillar that we live on. Um, being clean, we, that's, that's just one of our four C's. Customer service, of course you wanna take care of customers and consistency across all the stores. Uh, that's something that I created early in Candy Shack days because I wanted to make sure that we stayed consistent with all the products and everything that we had from location to location to location. Um, if we buy salt at one store, we need to buy the same salt at another store. We want everything to taste the same. Not to say that, you know, whatever. We just want everything to be the same. Uniform, so that was the purpose for consistency. So cleanliness has always been in there. So some things that I've had to change since coronavirus, um, I have had to uh, shut down my dine-in areas at all of my restaurants across the board, Jambas and Candy Shacks. While I have been able to allow for my drive throughs to remain open and I have been allowed for people to come in and take things out. Um, one of the things I did when I found out that the seating areas um, would be closed, I neatly stacked all of the chairs along the walls. I pulled all of the chalk off all of the tables of Candy Shack because if you know we are, you know, there's chalk on tables for people to write on the, the, the blackboards. People like to write their name or draw pictures or whatever, things to do. I immediately took all of that stuff off the table. Um, another thing that I did was I implemented um, 15 minute rotations um, to wipe and sanitize um, all of the counters or customer service, service areas where customers are coming in to pick up their food or their daiquiris or their uh, smoothies, whatever they're picking up. So I got 15 minute rotations of everybody wearing gloves. Uh, at Candy Shack, we were already wearing gloves in the, in the beginning. So we were wearing gloves to make the daiquiris anyway. But now it's been implemented that everyone has to wear gloves all day. Um, when receiving cash, uh, when handling or doing anything, period, gloves are to be worn, especially right now uh, with coronavirus going on. Um, so those are some changes that I've had to make. Um, uh, initially, when coronavirus first came out, I was faced with the tough decision. Do I want to close my stores? Um, initially, I was going to close them right away, not only for the, the, the health and safety of the customers, but for the health and safety of my team and to prevent the coronavirus spread. Um, I spoke with people about it. I spoke with my team about it and, you know, said, hey, guys, you know, spoke with management. Um, and the big concern was closing uh, the stores. Employees still have bills to pay. Um, they have rent. They have things. They have responsibilities. They have families they need to take care of. So immediately I said to myself, you know what? I can't close. I can't put them in that position. I can't. Um, and, and this is, again, this is like a really hard decision, you know, I mean, you know, they want to come to work. You have t your team and your staff, they want to come to work. Some people don't. Some people want to stay home. Some people want to quarantine. But then you have, you know, employees that are like, please don't close. I need the hours. I have rent is due on the first. I have children. I have things to pay for. And I have over 200 employees. So I, you know, I, I listen to my team. I listen to my employees. And I'm not just talking about upper level management, those that, you know, make a lot of money and things like that. I'm talking about everybody. So um, we chose to stay open um, at, at my candy shacks. And, you know, I told them I would do my best to keep the stores open as long as I can um, and try to, you know, in, in hopes that people will still come out and, and, and purchase, you know, things and purchase daiquiris, purchase food, um, and continue to allow the business to thrive. So my team, first and foremost, who, who is the most important to me in this time, just being concerned about, you know, their families and, and you know, concerned about them and their, 
the responsibilities and the things they have to take care of. Some people have school loans that they owe on, or some people have, you know, they have mortgages or they have rent, they have light bills, they have, their lights have to stay on, they have to put food on the table, they have children. I have, you know, uh, people that work for me that take care of other family members. They're young and they take care of their mother, their grandmother. You know, they're responsible for their home. So, you know, I, I couldn't just, I couldn't just close. And you know, that's, you know, it would have been selfish on me to just be like, all right guys, we're closed, you know, boom. So that was the reason I chose to stay open. Now, um, while the Candy Shack business has not really seen a dip or decline in sales, um, it, it, we have, but it hasn't been, you know, so bad where I've had to cut hours. I'm taking the short end of the stick, I don't mind. Again, my team is most important to me. So even though sales have declined with Candy Shack, I'm choosing to stay open and make sure that the team gets those hours. Whereas, I've met with a different situation in Arizona. Um, Arizona, I own a bunch of Jamba Juices. Um, my Jamba Juices got hit really hard with the coronavirus. So uh, when I say that, my sales have dropped tremendously. Um, almost to the tune of, it's costing me more to pay an employee to be there during the day than the store is actually making. And I've already cut hours, and I'm trying to spread them out as evenly as I possibly can. I've been working with my district manager, trying to come up with ideas, things like that. Um, I had a university store, a store that's located at the University of Arizona. They closed the campus down. I had no choice but to close the store because campus is closed and I'm on campus and when campus is closed, I can't be open. So um, I had to close that particular store. Um, I had no choice. The malls, I have two, two Jamba Juice locations that are located in malls. The malls are just, you know, they're not doing well. The malls, um, they significantly reduced the hours for the Arizona stores. Here in Houston, the malls have closed. Um, they're closed permanently at this point. No one could even go to any mall locations. All malls are closed, movie theaters, gyms, everything in Houston is closed. In Tucson, it's something different. The malls are open, but they're open limited hours. But the limited hours they're open, they're not making any money. So again, it's almost as if they might as well just not even be open. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm met with a, a difficult, another difficult uh, decision to make. Do I keep my malls open? Do I, do I close them? You know, what do I do? Um, you know, I want to be able to provide hours for those that need jobs and continue to be, you know, to be able to offer those jobs. But it's like, damn, what do I do? Do I keep them open? Do I close them? Do I just keep taking the losses? Do I go ahead and pay the wages even though the company is losing money tremendously? Um, you know, I, I moved some of the university employees that are actually reside in Tucson. I moved them to other store locations. I moved them around to try to help with hours. Hey guys, let's try to be team players. Let's give a few hours here, give a few hours there. Um, but with sales being down, sales are down, you know, 90%, literally. You know, I have managers on salaries. You know, I, I've even thought you know, what, what is the best thing for the employees there? Do I terminate them so they can collect unemployment? Um, it seems like that's the best solution because if I terminate them, at least they can go get unemployment. They can make more than what I'm giving them. They can get, you know, than the hours that I'm able to give them. Um, again, if I have one person at work and, you know, I'm not even making enough to keep one person at work. Um, so I have six Jamba Juice locations in, in Arizona. One was closed by default for, for the university. The mall locations are, are barely, you know, they're not even making anything to stay afloat. So I'm faced with the tough decision to close or to not close those two mall locations. Um, the other three standalone stores, they're doing okay, but again, sales are down. So I've had to cut hours. You know, and I, I know I'm not the only business, business owner hurting. I've talked to several of my friends that are business owners and asked them, hey guys, um, how are you doing? I have, you know, friends that own clubs and bars. They're closed permanently. You know, they, they can't even open their doors, period. They can't even make money. They can't even do to go. Uh, you know, and, it, and it's, hurting, it's hurting their business. You know, we're all feeling the effects of coronavirus and it, you know, and it trickles down. And, you know, I've decided in Arizona, I'm going to 
try to take as much heat as I can, you know, before I have to close down any of the stores. Um, it's an unfortunate circumstance because I understand that, you know, the government is saying they're gonna provide a stimulus package, $1,200. What, what is that? That's nothing. You know, I mean, people can't live off $1,200. Who, I, I mean, that sounds like somebody's rent, rent car note, you know? So again, I'm gonna try to do my best to keep those stores open. But you know, the reality of it is that they're probably some of the stores are gonna have to close um, in Arizona. And I think, you know, with coronavirus going on, I think it's gonna come to a point where um, I'm seeing California, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, they're, they're shutting down those states, period, where everything is closed. And I think it's gonna end up being nationwide. I think it's gonna, you know, come to a point where they shut everything down. And, you know, everyone's gonna have to self-quarantine or be at home for, you know, two weeks to a month or however long this thing goes on. So, you know, in my head, I'm just doing my part to try to get as many hours uh, to my team as I can because this could potentially be their last paycheck. Because we don't know what, you know, we don't know what tomorrow holds or what the next thing is. So, you know, I'm just trying to be conscious of not only the business side of things, but the, the employees. You know, I have to look at the whole picture. I've never been one to just sit back and look at myself and say, oh, I'm losing money. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna close. I'm just gonna close the store and just, you know, I think about everybody. I think about, you know, uh, my, my team members, uh, the managers, um, everything that, that goes involved with it, you know what I mean? Because it's not just me. If I, you know, if I'm not selling, then we're not ordering product from our vendors. And not all of our vendors are huge, large vendors. Some of these people are small vendors and they rely on the business that I provide to take care of their families, to take care of their responsibilities. So I have to look at it from every which angle um, when, when making decisions to close, if you will. Um, so, I mean, coronavirus is, is definitely taking its toll on me. Yeah, especially at my Jamba Juices, we've taken a great hit. Like I said, sales are down literally 90%. Um, we're making next to nothing at the two mall locations. No one's going into the mall. Those two stores are making less than $100 a day. They're not even making enough to, to pay for the employee to come to work. You know, I can't afford the light bill, none of that. So, um, I mean, it's just not making enough money to, to sustain at this point. But I made a business decision to remain open um, for a period of time as long as I can. Uh, I'm assuming the mall is gonna shut down here soon anyway, but uh, right now my decision is to stay open for as long as I can, uh, withstand the losses, uh, just, just for my team, because I know that they need it more than I do. Uh, so that's kind of some of the stuff I wanted to talk to you guys about today, kind of coronavirus, address some of the things, some of the adjustments that I've made, and some of the, some of the stuff and how it's affected me and how it's affected you know, my business. Um, my Jamba Juices has affected my candy shacks, you know, um, the sales um, and just different steps that we've had to take uh, to continue to thrive in this, in this global pandemic that we're experiencing currently. Um, uh, so that's pretty much it, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, we just wanted to share, to share with you guys what's going on um, in hopes that maybe, you know, for some business owners, you know, maybe it can shed some light on some things that you guys are doing. Maybe it can give you guys some ideas, help out. Um, shit, that's it, man. Y'all holla at me. Follow me at Mind of a Millionaire on Instagram. Uh, y'all make sure y'all check me out on YouTube. I'll be back with some more heat from y'all soon. Thank you.